Welcome everybody to Mindful Social. This is where we talk with people who I really believe are very mindful in how they run their businesses and how they use social media. I'm really excited to have Brian Kramer on this week because he's a really good friend and one of those people that I think really walks his talk. And it's always good to talk to people that are real and authentic. And Brian has been launching a lot of information lately about personal branding and building a personal brand. And he's done a great job of that with himself. Brian, why don't you talk to us a little bit about what it is you do for the like nine people who don't already know that. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> uh, I'd say go read Wikipedia. <laughs> 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 Um, you know, it's, it's, it's such a, uh, kind of a, uh, an interesting thing. I, I was trying to decide whether I was going to call it personal brand, um, because there's, there's even, um, you know, some people who negate the, the fact that people are brands and that's, I think an underlying argument, um, that I was going through over the last year trying to figure out. Cause I've been working on um, releasing the information you're talking about um, over a year, it may be even longer. It's been something that's been really on my mind. I think you two have stuff like this that you're working on that, mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to figure out what are you going to call it? What's the platform? Um, that kind of thing. And personal branding is, is an interesting, unique position because you're basically telling someone that they too can be as powerful as a product or service or company. Mm -hmm. And I finally decided to use it because I think that they can be powerful. As, and I don't mean powerful like like running for office powerful. I mean, I mean the the brand can can stand on its own. That the person can be just as strong. And 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 what I what I decided is that um, that a person can actually be stronger than an actual product, service, or company. So, um, so because of that, I, I really do feel like a person can be a brand when a person stands up and says something and they are passionate within a certain area and they are trusted and they have worked really hard to become known for that thing, meaning they're the go-to for that kind of information um, because people trust them then I think believe, I believe that they have not only become an expert, which is another way of saying it, but they've also become a, um, a built a brand around them. Mm -hmm. And, and people will continue to go to them for that kind of information. The hard part is what do you do with it? Uh, not only how you build it, but what do you do with it? Once you, once you get it, get to that, that level of, of, of having, uh, you know, in air quotes, branded yourself. And then, and once you've done that, then, then um, then what's next? Because you've kind of locked yourself in to this one brand. So now what? Um, how do you grow from there? So there, right. I, I believe there's those three separate areas that you have to concentrate on. Even if you don't call it personal brand, you just call it becoming an expert or, you know, whatever. Um, the, the same theory applies. I think, though, that, you know, we can all apply a lot of the things that we see applied to, you know, commercial brands or business brands to how we set ourselves up as, as individuals. And, you know, we need to represent, right. We need to, to be true to what the brand is that we build for ourselves, even if maybe that isn't our private life, but you know, it's, it's, to me, it's about being authentic is part of your brand. That's how we build that trust. Isn't it? Being authentic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, being authentic is absolutely a huge piece of it. Um, being yourself and um, and and making sure that your voice is heard. I I um, I literally I think I screwed up, even though I, I did all right. Um, I, I I did some things I won't do again because my emails came off um, so uh, robotic and so um, and too much. I I, I piled it on. Um, I was following the same people you follow, Janet, and actually using their methodology mm -hmm. to launch my my course. And this will come back around to your point of authenticity. But um, but I was trying to get 
the communication around my course to match um, those that have done it before us and done it very, very well. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, I made the emails sound almost unlike me and um, and it sounded more like them. And that was my um, that was my misstep. That was a misstep I'll never do again. I have to bring the tone back into the emails of what I think people like about me didn't come through in those emails. And so I, I'll change that. But to your point, authenticity is absolutely like the underlying thing that makes you and your brand unique and special. And um, and 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 you can you can learn from it and you can change it over time to figure out what that is. I'm still doing that, obviously. <laughs> I don't think it ever stops. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, I think, you know, I did hear you and you're in the emails that you sent out. And, you know, I know that we do connect with a lot of the same people who are the gurus or in air yeah, quotes of, right. um, you know, marketing businesses and creating courses and all of that. And there are a lot of formulas out there yeah. and it's very hard because I think when, from what I understand with the way that you are and the way that I am too, you know, it's kind of icky to yeah. do this constant yeah. thing, but yeah. it works. So you have to try it, but at the same yeah. time, it kind of makes you Here, itch. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the rub. It worked. Mm -hmm. It actually did work. And yeah. they are right. Here's the thing. I will never do it again. Yeah. I won't. It, it's not me and it's not what I stand for. And I don't care if it works or not. I can't do that anymore. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to find a different way to communicate um, that still keeps the integrity of me. But also, I mean, I'm not going to quit it completely, but I'm going to find a new way that injects my voice and my tone and my cadence mm -hmm. um, because that's the misstep that I don't want to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think, you know, I think that there are ways to do what they do yeah. in a way that isn't quite so icky, but you know, it, it really, it's a lot of work and, yeah. you know, being authentic and still reaching a mass of people is really challenging and maybe it's simply that you don't need to reach a mass of people right um so let's talk a little bit more about what um you know when you're marketing your course you're talking about building a superhuman brand so let's talk about what superhuman means to you um so no no capes required it's a um it, it so I, it, it part of it is that I wanted to um, have some fun with it. Mm -hmm. So the superhuman part doesn't mean that you will actually eventually fly just for anyone out there who thinks that might be possible. Dang it. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I hope. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or invisible powers or anything like, no, not going to happen. Um, but uh, the idea behind it really is that, um, that uh, you know, the the fun part of the superpowers, the superhuman, um, you know, really building yourself up to a place where you don't have to work as hard to do certain things. Like for instance, um, it's a really uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people out there that are able to enjoy uh, new business coming to them, um, or um, I shouldn't say a lot. There are people. Um, there, there are, um, you know, ways that you can get speaking, paid speaking uh, uh, opportunities. There are ways that you can get, um, you know, your first book published um, by Penguin, if that's what you want. There are different things that people can accomplish that they haven't yet um, done. And, and they're scratching their heads thinking, how do I get that? I really want that. And, um, and, and it might be one of those things or it could be all of them. Like they really just want to, you know, set them up for success. It may be that they're just stuck in their job and yet they're really an entrepreneurial spirit but within a company. They're locked down and can't seem to move or get a, a raise. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, so, you know, part of that is really looking at 
how you're presenting yourself and your own um, messaging and and looking at you know things like your messaging tree and figuring out what kinds of opportunities you're even looking for over the next three to five years so that you can you know make sure that everything's in line. It's also kind of looking at um, you know how people perceive you versus how you perceive you so that you can make sure that those two things are coming together in the best sweet spot ever. So once you have all of these different things aligned, then um, then you you now put in probably more work than most people have on their own personal brand. I believe that's what makes you kind of, you know, a little bit of a of a superpower um, because now you can actually get, you know really intentionally guide your way mm-hmm. down the road to whichever of those things matter the most to you. And um, and I think most people don't spend time on them. I mean, the one thing I heard over and over and over and over again. I'm, I'm not kidding, like email after email or day, day to day to day was I, I would take this, but I don't have time. I would take this, but I don't have time. It wasn't the money, it was the time. And I was like, you know, that's really fascinating. I really thought it was going to be the money. Um, mm-hmm. But the time is the superpower. It's the, even if you didn't, you don't do anything with me, if you just take the time for you to sit down and go to a lake or go to an ocean or go to wherever your happy place is. I know you do this all the time with horses. Um, actually, you you probably do this more than anybody I know. You're, you're like the queen <laughs> of taking no, time for yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so, um, but, but I mean, that's like, that is, but that's the time when you reflect. Now, what do you do with that time? That's the superpower. Like, are you, mm-hmm you know, and not you. I mean, it, w- when people actually uh, go somewhere to to focus, what are they doing with that? Like th- two to three times a year, um, I will go to the beach with a notebook and a uh, chair, a beach chair, and that's it. And just write down everything I want to accomplish for the next year or two years or whatever, mm-hmm. and then align it and so on and so forth and go through this exact process. And so, um, so I think that taking time for you is not something that typically people do and that's the taking that time is what gives you the superpower. Mm -hmm. I think that's really true specifically for smaller businesses where you know they have that phrase that I spend more time working in my business than on my business. Right. And you know something that uh, my partner taught me a while back was every once in a while you've got to just do those retreats. And I do it a little differently, which is very odd for me because I tend to think my best when I'm on my horse or I'm out in the woods or something like that. But about two, three times a year, I will rent an office space in, you know, a Regis center where it's nothing but me and a desk and a whole bunch of those big white sticky notes that you use for whiteboards. And I will just cover the walls with where I want my business to go, where I want my band, brand to be directed and really start to set some of those intentions. And then I come back and hang them on the walls of the office so that I don't forget them. I actually work on them. Um, Does it work all the time? No, about half of it doesn't even get done, but it does keep you moving forward. And I I think that's a really important thing to really identify. Um, I know that one of the things that you did was ask people a lot of questions in the beginning about what their uh, issues were and Mm. where they wanted to go. Um, You know, and I I think that's a really fascinating process um, when you start getting that feedback from people. Right. Can you give us a little insight as to, you know, besides I don't have time, (laughs) what else did you hear from people about what were their challenges with their brands? Oh, wow. Um, you're, you're, you're having me dig back into the memory banks here. Um, they, uh, yeah. So I got, I got around a thousand responses to that. You're talking about the, the, I guess, survey that I Mm -hmm. did. And, um, and it was pretty consistent what people were looking for. You're, you're right. Time was, was probably the biggest factor or one of the biggest factors in there. Um, I think um, I think you're you're catching me at a, at a tough spot because I can't remember back we I did this like two or three months ago. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I know I read a lot of people were scratching their heads a lot. Um, there were um, I'm stuck and I don't know how to. 
um, comments. Mm. Uh, because everybody has a different job and different role and different whatever. And so I wasn't going to solve all that kind of stuff. But the scratching the head part, people were scratching their head a lot on, I don't know how to, you know, and then fill in the blank, um, get an, get an increase in my, in my, um, pay or, you know, there were, there were people that were coming across, um, you know, different, um, different points in their, entrepreneurial life, their business life that were pretty consistent at a year, call it three or four, I think, um, mm -hmm. where they weren't able to, they hit a roadblock, they hit a wall and they weren't sure how to, how to uh, either keep going or move on to another thing. Um, you know, so there were roadblocks left and right with usually around years, I noticed, um, you know, uh, the amount of years that you, you own a, a business, I think is, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty tough. So a lot of people were going through that. Um, but there were also, um, I was surprised that there was a lot, there's a lot of high level, like, um, I, I'm doing really well, but I don't know what's next for me. Um, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I've achieved this stuff. Now what, or what do I do next? Um, I, I don't know what to do next. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of that as well. Mm. And then I had a few friends that were throwing in some funny stuff that probably shouldn't be said on the, the video. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it, it was interesting. The reason that I'm having a hard time um, answering your question is because I actually, I, I grouped all the answers into trends mm -hmm. um, and then I, and then I matched them to the core, the course modules. So I spent time reading every single one at one point, but to, to uh, collect and memorize them was really hard. So I pulled, I pulled them into more of a trend um, grouping, if you will, and, and then threw out the rest because they were the minority of it, scored it, and then and then ended up with the course that way. So I didn't really look at, I did look at what they wrote, but I didn't look at it as the ultimate reason for what I was going to do. It was the grouping of the trend that people, built. does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. It, well, it does because I know the process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your personal brand and, and how that's evolved over the last, what, gosh, should we say five years? It's gone. Your brand has, has taken off and, you know, you've built H to H, you built a lot on your humanness and human to human, as well as your brand on pure matter. So how have you evolved your own personal brand over the last few years? Uh, um, okay. So pure matter and so first of all, I, I wish I could say that I set out intentionally to grow it using, uh, and doing the things that I did, but that, that would not be right. It didn't. Um, I literally stood on stage one day and said the right thing at the right time and it took off and um, so it really didn't, that part did happen to me. Um, what everything that took place before that and took place after that was more intentional, but that moment in time wasn't, wasn't intentional. The, the release of the human aspect or the human to human piece. Okay. But um, you did run with that. You saw that that resonated with people yeah. and you built on that. Yeah, that was, um, you know, it was something that I was saying for the previous 10 years, you know, talking to walls, basically trying to get everybody to hear what I had yeah. to say. And finally, one day it did take um, and it not only took it took in a massive way. And so then I was asked getting asked questions about what this means. And I I knew that it, a book had to get out in order to answer those questions because there was a ton of them, not just tons. There was there was huge amounts of questions coming in. So. So the book really kind of launched the whole thing and took advantage of the um, the, the 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 moment. Um, then it became it went back to being intentional again. So um, I don't believe that it would have taken off had I not had an intentional brand leading up to that. Um, mm -hmm. I worked really hard to blog and speak and do all these things that helped to raise awareness over, um, you know, the things that I was, I was doing or the things I was passionate about up till then. And then that helped then, um, you know, things to just happen to fall into place because you can't control everything. And so yeah. when something happens, then, you know, if you've built your brand the right way, then it's going to reflect in, in the right way. 
And so that's what happened. And then after that, um, I felt like I had a pretty good base to then now start building, you know, putting the building blocks in place and start doing different things, um, testing different things. I mean, the whole thing really was a lot of testing, like, oh, not going to do that again. <laughs> you <laughs> Nobody <know>? makes mistakes. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, I think um, I think a lot of the stuff that that um, I equate you know, personal brand building to the things that, that I, I, I try to do for my, myself that I'm now, you know, trying to teach others to do is that they need to think about, um, about what they really, really want. Like, what is it like, do you really want to be on stage or would you rather be behind your computer? Do you really mm -hmm. want to write books? Are you a writer or do you really want to, um, you know, help somebody do, um, you know, something else like build their marketing plan are you really really a marketer and you just you know it, it sometimes it's 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 appetizing to go um you know s travel and speak but that's not really in your in your soul to do mm -hmm. that and and so there's there's different um there's different types of what you might call an influencer or an expert or a personal brand and you have to match yourself to what you're really comfortable doing not just because you know, um, getting up and, and speaking looks awesome. Uh, it may not be part of your soul. So, mm -hmm. um, so there are different categories. And once you find your kind of area of comfortability, then you start to push the envelope there a little mm -hmm. more so that you're, you're still pushing the envelope on what you, what you want, but you're not doing it in a way because you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Um, it's more just you competing with you. And that's really where, where it should be. So, I mean, it's a kind of a long answer. You asked me how I, how I grew mine I, i've never really competed with anyone else i, I there's a lot of com uh, competing going on in um in in different circles of our online world and it's kind of like a just a a, a, a shit show of <laughs> of people that are you know high-fiving each other saying good job good job good job for themselves for themselves yeah, yeah. and 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 that, and i just i think that that um that if you really want to grow an authentic uh, great human brand, then stop doing that and just start competing with yourself. And then you're going, you're going to eventually get to where you want to be. And mm -hmm. that's going to be more admirable from the audience you're trying to, um, you know, you're trying to speak to than, than anyone else. And that's the right audience too. It's an audience that cares. It's an audience that wants to take part. It's an audience that really truly believes you because you're not high fiving and saying "bro, right on," blah blah. blah. This is this is what what um, makes I think a, a truly authentic brand. Mm. I don't mm. know if I even answered your question, but <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> and it, it also brings another question. You know, we talk a lot about influencer outreach and what a real influencer is, as opposed right. to someone you know who's got bazillions of fake followers. Yeah, and I think what you just said really speaks to that, that, you know, a true influencer actually has influence. Right. And they don't have it because, you know, they, they're one, one size fits all kind of, you know, I can do anything. I can talk about anything. Yeah. You know, they have a brand. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a disconnect um, there. I think it'll change. Excuse me. I think it'll change eventually. But when you're talking about influence or influencers, they do have to have some kind of measurable following mm -hmm. um, for a big brand to partner with you. Um, right. I don't think that that means you are or are not influential. That's just how big brands have to operate because they have managers and people above them looking for numbers. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they're going to get that is if they have a person with a larger following in a certain category. Again, I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying that's how it is. Right. Um, and that will change over time. It will be less about the numbers and more about other things. But right now that's, that is the state of the state. I think, um, I think what brands should really do is they should put together. Um, and th I, I think that they should teach people how to become influential. Um, mm -hmm. and, and pick the right people and then raise them. It, it won't happen for a really long time because that's too much investment to put into one person 
only for them to go away and do the same thing for other brands that you just invested in them. So they're, mm -hmm. you know, that that's a really hard thing to do what I'm saying, but if they did raise influencers, the right, the right way, the right path, they would have sharing that, um, that met what you're talking about in a much more authentic way than, um, than, um, than somebody who's just focused on numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is a challenge because the brands need those metrics. They need those numbers to, to, report why they spent that money. Um, and you can't always travel down the path to see whether that actually resulted in sales or opt-ins or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Right. They don't always get that. Um, so you can't, if you can't directly correlate that sale to the influencer, then you've got to have some kind of metric to, yeah. to do it on. And, um, you know, I think it's one of the biggest failings that we have with influencer outreach is that you end up with people who have massive followings or, you know, what my pet peeve is the ones who post things on Instagram and maybe get, you know, $700,000 for liking something on uh, Instagram right. or posting something on Instagram and then they take it down the next day and the value to the brand is completely gone. Right. It's, it's a really, it's a very interesting space to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, yeah, it's becoming dirty and um, in certain areas and in others, it's um, you know, it, it, it's, it's handled at a certain level that um, you know, it's not looked at as a relationship. It's, it's, it's um, it's a commodity. Um, you know, some people are paying uh, money to, uh, just for sheer signups and registrations for, you know, if, if, if you, um, sorry, <laughs> is that the, uh, is that the, the brand, bat phone, the brand police? It's the bat phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably Adam Hellway disagreeing with us. It probably is. <laughs> <It would. laughs> now, wait a second. <laughs> well, it's always a challenge for me. You know, when, when we do influencer outreach and we start talking about, you know, what those settings are and, you know, what what the milestones are for a campaign, um, you know, yeah, you can get a lot of people to, you know, like posts or you can get them to engage. Um, I kind of like how some of the brands, you know, are doing it with uh, Wemo is one that's, that's doing a really good job. Yeah. Ford is doing a really good job. Um, because they actually invest in the influencers that they bring in. Yeah. Um, by the way, Ford, I'd love to, a new truck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I think, and I know that you work with a lot of brands as a personal influencer as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the ones that really invest the time and the energy get a lot more over the long term than the ones that want that one big hit with thousands of impressions on Twitter and then right. poof, it's gone. Yeah. Um, I know I, it, you should see my contracts there line item by line item of exactly what will be done and when it'll mm -hmm. be done. And it's, it's, um, it's a shame <laughs> because, yeah. because I probably would have, you know, if, if you let serendipity run uh, more often than, than scheduling, um, I, I, t I tend to trend bigger that way because I can naturally see something and be very interested in it versus being uh, forced interested in it mm -hmm. because that's where I'm supposed to be. And um, I'm very serendipitous when it comes to just walking around a trade show or a, a conference and I can find things that are unique and interesting. But anyway, that, that kind of stuff is, is going to shape itself up eventually, I think, because this is only getting started. It's not yeah. a, it's not a new, it's not a trend that's going to go away in like less than a year. I think people are going to really start to see this meld of influence marketing come together from, you know, the best of all worlds. It's digital marketing meets demand generation meets public relations. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, there is no other, and has never been another type of marketing tactic that really involves all three so tightly and also crosses over into the human relationship part. Yeah, and I, I think that the consumer is going to guide that to some extent too. That, you know, I mean, we all recognize when, I mean, okay, sponsored posts have to say sponsored on them anyway, but we recognize when, you know, somebody has been given text to share on their blog or whatever. Yeah. It's so obvious 
that you know we bounce off that sure you get your numbers and you get your impressions but yeah, yeah we kind of bounce off that right and i think that's going to direct where brands go with with their marketing messages yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. so um okay so we've talked about brand influence we've talked about your brand uh we haven't talked very much about pure matter and what pure matter does and i think um there may be six people out there that that don't know what pure matter does <laughs> um or what you do so why don't we talk a little bit more about that um what i'm gonna i'm gonna really stretch you out here but what is brian kramer's personal brand um so my my brand vision is is um in my brand value i i just wrote this out the other day um mm -hmm. is uh is to is to help in individuals um individual brands or or company brands to re realize their their power in um the areas that they they really want to grow mm -hmm. and um and to have a kick-ass fun time doing it mm -hmm. so that's my uh that's my statement but um i i think uh i think that um uh you know as far as my my personal brand goes it's really focused around three different things one is consulting that's pure matter two is um building e-courses e that's hh university i just launched and then the third thing is speaking and writing mm -hmm. um uh, so so those are the three focus areas for me um and then as far as pure matter goes we actually re uh structured the entire company two years ago um and so we now have uh, a completely virtual agency. We don't have a physical space anymore. We're very um, autonomous and looking for um, work that's focused around just influencer marketing, um, uh, social eminence for executives, uh, growth for executives, personal branding for executives, I should say, and then um, and then uh, social media consultation or consulting. So those are the three areas that, that Pure Matter is really focused on. And and I've, I've I'm still very heavily involved with Pure Matter from a business development, accounting, and operations standpoint. But the majority of the uh, work that's being done from that point forward is all Courtney. So she's running the show and 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 doing all kinds of great stuff with Pure Matter. So mm -hmm. um, I'm. Um, I'm definitely involved. I'd say it's 25, 30% of my job total, but, um, and we sit, she's probably even can hear me right now, but, um, but, uh, we, you know, obviously we work, not only work together, we live together, but, um, but otherwise that's what pure matter is doing is, is building, um, continuing to build relationships with big companies. Like, you know, we're working with, um, Netflix and Cisco and West Marine and, um, all kinds of really cool stuff. So um, it's 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 humming along for sure. Um, we're also pivoting uh, the Pure Matter brand. So PureMatter.com is no longer going to be um, an agency or consulting uh, website. It'll have that as an element to it. But the majority of the website is now going to start to grow as a media platform. Mm. So we're going to build it out and have um, have content that comes out uh, almost daily. And we're going to have a huge uh, guest uh, um, uh, publishing area, and we're going to build it out to have events and and so on and so forth. I'm already doing uh, you know HTH chats and podcasts and stuff, but it's going to really be focused on on to PureMatter.com, and then that's going to grow hopefully as a as a as a media entity. So mm -hmm. that's our focus. We hired a full time editor <clears throat> to help help run that and help guide us and start building the team up and working on that. So that's our next, next fun thing. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. 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 I, um, I think the move to a virtual company is, is really challenging for a lot of people. Um, have you found it? So I know that you have people all over the country that, you know, work with you and, and, uh, you've got such an amazing team that, was it hard to go virtual or was that something that was easy for you? Um, it was, it was, uh, part of it was dictated by the environment that we were in with the, some certain relationships that we had um, with the types of work that we were taking on. It was butting up against some of the big agencies, the global agencies around the world. It started to get, uh, get to be no fun. 
And um, and so we wanted to refocus back on the things that weren't being uh, as competitive and and having to fight for what we wanted and and just doing things that that were needed and get, and got some really amazing results. So that part was not a problem at all. That was really nice to be able to switch away from that and move into something that just felt like we were giving some great value there without any you know a lot of the pushback we're feeling. The hard part was converting the 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 people, the humans. Um, mm. Taking them away from the known entity of pure matter into an unknown, here's what we're now going to be, um, always leaves people with questions. Um, everyone converted over to a contractor and ended up, um, you know, becoming um, a contractor with, with pure matter. 100% of everyone did it. And then slowly but surely people found whether they still wanted to continue to do that or if they still needed to go after a full-time job, which several people did. So, so it was, it was not an easy transition <laughs> for like a week or two. I mean, it was just, it was very hectic, very stressful. Yeah. Uh, but um, the transition's tough. Yeah. It's, it was not like, it wasn't, I won't, I don't want to do it again. Um, but, but I also feel like it was the right thing to do that mm -hmm. it, it ended up, everybody ended up in a much better place. I mean, we have one employee who ended up I think getting a job at Apple and he's so stoked. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many little, you know, somebody got a job as head of social strategy at Oracle. Like everyone ended up in such a almost better place. Um, I couldn't be happier with all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I love uh, getting my work done now because <laughs> when I was in an office environment, I can't tell you how much, uh, my do my door was a revolving door and I, and I, and I loved it on some, some aspects because I was talking to so many people, but man, my, my productivity has gone up so yeah. high because I am in total control of who walks in my door. No one except Courtney and, mm -hmm. and whatever I answer on email. So it, I, I really do love it. I, I miss, I do miss the people. I miss standing up, walking around, Snapchatting, blah, 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 you know, mm -hmm. having crazy, lunches and stuff like that but mm. but i have plenty of friends like you who lives two minutes away which we need to catch up for lunch by the way we do um and uh and and we you know there's that so mm -hmm. yeah yeah well we went virtual in 2000 and and it was hard um you know we had offices on Petro hill in san francisco and you know it was really great but at the same time you're right you spend most of your time and your productive time putting out fires or cube hopping or, you right. know, there's so many things and the cost is insane. And oh. so, you know, going virtual worked better, I think for everybody and, and everybody is their own business now, which has allowed them to, you know, bring in other work that they want to do and follow their passions and not feel as stuck. Yeah. So I, I'm really glad to hear that you made that leap. Hey, can I, t can I give a, you you have uh, four people here, three people that are registered: <laughs> Helene, Tina, and Laura. Uh -huh. I just wanted to give a shout out to those guys if they're watching. Um, hey, how are you doing? And Helene, your last name is Creamer, K R E M E R. Clearly, Helena doesn't know how to spell. You know what are we saying here? <laughs> 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 and Helena, by the way, is on my team and, and oh, okay. uh, you know, she works virtually out of the Bay Area, too. And oh, nice. it's really um, I, it's really fun to have a team that, you know, you can work with and still they do their own thing, too. And, and that's. pretty uh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So, uh, Brian, why don't you let people know where they can find you? OK. God, I hope. Um... I hope it's easy enough. It's at Brian Kramer. Oh, that's really hard. Or BrianKramer.com. <laughs> okay. So I just want to make sure that you guys, oh, it's Brian with a Y and Kramer with a K. And that's not, yeah. that's, how do you say her last name? Kramer? Kramer? Mm -hmm. uh, Helene? Helena? Um, yeah. So this is Kramer with an A and a K. K-R-A-M-E-R. Great. There you go. And we will be posting this on YouTube. It'll also be on my Spreaker channel and eventually it'll be on Facebook. Um, and so, you know, we do syndicate this and, and I hope that if people are watching, please uh, add comments on YouTube or on Spreaker. Let us know what questions you have and I will send them back to Brian and he'll probably ignore me because, you know, 
<laughs> no. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for watching today. And please follow us. Visit the website at mindfulsocialmarketing.com for next upcoming shows. And just thanks. Thanks a lot for being here, Brian. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it as always. Me too. Always a pleasure.